Hey food fans, welcome back to Then We Eat. In this episode, we'll be making cheddar cheese. You can buy a number of kits online that will give you the basic ingredients to make pretty much any cheese of your choice. Um, this week we'll be making cheddar cheese. It's very easy to do. So we start with some cheese culture. This is called cheddar cheese, uh, also referred to as MM100 culture. We also have calcium chloride and some rennet. And I'll be adding uh, some uh, annetto. This will give it the yellow color. This generally doesn't come in the kits. Then as far as utensils go, there's not much you need. You're gonna need something to stir the cheese. You're gonna need a thermometer to, to uh, keep track of the temperature of the milk. And a measuring cup, some measuring spoons, a piece of cheesecloth, and a small wire to cut the curd. We'll show you this later. Generally, this comes in the kit as well. So that's all you need. So let's head on over to the stove and get started. So the first thing you're gonna need is a pot and you should have taken the milk out two to three hours before starting to let it reach room temperature. We're now gonna bring the temperature of the milk up to 88 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, it should take about 15 minutes to bring it up. Don't do it too quickly. You don't wanna scald the milk. You should stir it every once in a while just to, uh, to disperse the uh, heat around a bit. Um, once the milk's come up to temperature, then we can start adding some ingredients. You should come by and stir the milk every few minutes just to disperse the temperature around a bit. So, once the uh, temperature of the milk has got to 88 degrees, turn off the burner and we can start to add some of the ingredients. I'm going to add, as I mentioned, the annetto that turns it yellow, which you wouldn't generally get in a cheese kit. Um, so we've added um, a quarter of a teaspoon of annetto to a quarter cup of water. And we'll just stir that in. So once that's stirred in, we're then gonna add a eighth of a teaspoon of the culture, the cheddar cheese culture. And just sprinkle it over the top. And you're gonna let that sit and rehydrate for approximately two minutes. Okay, so once you've waited two minutes, then you're gonna come back and give it a bit of a stir. And then we're gonna add the calcium chloride. And once again, we've used a uh, quarter teaspoon of calcium chloride and we've added it to a quarter of a cup of water. You do wanna make sure that it's not chlorinated water. Then we're just gonna stir that in. And put the lid back on the pot. And we'll wrap the pot in towels to uh, keep it as close to the temperature as we can. And we'll be back in an hour.
Okay, so it's been an hour and now we're going to uh, add the rennet. So while we were off camera, I've added a quarter tablet of rennet to some distilled water and we will add it now to the pot. If you're gonna add it to the distilled water, make sure you don't do any more than 15 or 20 minutes. After a half an hour, you'll kill the rennet. So I'd make sure to get every drop of rennet out that you possibly can. And then give it a stir. And then we wait an hour for the rennet to work its magic. And when we come back, we should have some curd. Uh, we're gonna rewrap it again. We wanna keep it as close to the uh, 30 degrees as we can. Oh, we'll see you in an hour. So we're back. So now what we'll do is let's see if we can get a clean break on the rennet, on the uh, curd rather. <coughs> And I'm pretty happy with that. So I think we'll say that that's a nice clean break. So now the next thing we're going to do is cut the, uh, cut the curd into between half and three quarter inch pieces. Uh, the bigger the curd, or the smaller the curd, the harder the uh, cheddar cheese will be. So we'll start with somewhere between a half and three quarters of an inch strips. And then once you've gone one way, then go the other way. Mine are probably closer to three quarters to an inch because I prefer that the cheddar is not all that hard. Once you've done that, then you can take the wire and run approximately every half to three quarters of an inch from top to bottom. So just put it in and rotate the wire around until you've back to the beginning. Then lower it a little and then do it again. Oops, kind of messed that one up. Okay, and once you've, uh, once you've cut the curd, then just let it sit for about five minutes. And we're back. So I, Ended up leaving it 10 minutes. I didn't think five minutes was quite enough. So I would recommend leaving it for 10 minutes, not five. Uh, the other thing is make sure you leave the lid on the pot because you want to keep the temperature as close to uh, the uh, 30 degrees that we started with. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly heat the uh, curtain way to about 102 Fahrenheit or roughly 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, so we'll continue to stir. We're going to use an up and down motion and be very careful so that we don't break the curd up too much. So that'll take probably about 15 minutes. Once again, don't heat it too fast or you have the potential of burning. So just kind of put it to the bottom, lift up, and just continue to do that for 15 minutes. Speaking as my lazy self, I tried just doing it occasionally for 15 minutes. You actually do have to do it for the full 15 minutes. If you see any bigger chunks, just break them up a bit so that they look about the same size as the rest over the 15 minutes. And you can just cut them with the side of your spoon. So basically what you're trying to do here is just to uh, extract as much whey as you can from the curd. I should point out, you want a fairly heavy pot for this so that uh, the temperature not only stays, you know, as close to temperature as you can, um, but it also will heat the whole pot as opposed to just the bottom. You'll notice that the uh, curd is getting smaller. Um, some of that has to do with the fact that it does break up some, but the other thing is that the whey is slowly being released from the curd. So you should be able to see that there's a lot more whey in the pot now and the curds are getting much, much smaller. So once you've reached uh, 102 Fahrenheit or roughly 40 degrees Celsius, then we'll put the lid back on to keep the critters out and leave it for about 15 minutes. And we're back. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to take out as much way to bring it down to the same height as the curd. Except you should use a measuring cup, not a slotted spoon. You can see that the whey has separated a lot from the uh, curd. Once we have the uh, liquid down to about the height of the curd, then we'll stir it for another 10 minutes or so to let out any more whey. I like to use the, uh, the uh, sieve for this. It keeps the curd from getting into the measuring cup. Okay, so once we're down to about there, then we're gonna stir it for another 10 minutes. So if you didn't use the annatto at this point, your cheese is gonna be much whiter than this is. This is the color that the annatto's added. So you can see how much more whey has come out of the cheese, out of the curd now. We should be almost there. By now you can see the curd is getting quite small. So after about 10 minutes, it should look a little like this. And we'll let it sit for a couple of minutes while we prep our colander and cheesecloth. One of the things that you can do to see if the curd is ready is you can do a, a task. Just give the curd a squeeze and make sure it sticks together and then just pull it apart and make sure it'll still pull apart. So that's, that's pretty good. If you find that it's not quite ready, then just stir it for another 10 minutes or so. So now what we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, strain the curd into the colander and let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and then we'll put it back in the bowl. Um, you can keep the whey, it's good for cooking. You can use it supposedly to wash your hair and it's also good for your garden. So I'll leave that and let it strain for, as I say, about 10 to 15 minutes. And then we'll come back and uh, it'll be ready for seasoning. All right, after you let it set in the colander for a while, then we'll lift it out of the colander and uh, pour it back in the bowl. Just squeeze out a little extra whey. And that should be good. All right, so now we'll uh, put the curd back in the bowl. And then we'll season it with a little salt. Generally, you're, you're gonna use about a teaspoon of salt for um, every half pound of curd. So in this case, we're gonna use about a teaspoon and three quarters or so, because I'm not absolutely certain there's a full pound here. So, and just sprinkle it over the curd. And then give it a little break up. Try not to throw it all over the counter like I just did and just try to get it as even as possible so kind of break the curds up if you've got any big chunks and uh, when you think you've got the first teaspoon mixed in then just add depending on the amount as they say it's about a half a or a teaspoon to about a half a pound so so I'll put in the other half or a little more and give it another quick stir. And at this point, if you're interested in making flavored cheddar cheese, you can add uh, pretty much anything at this point. Liquid smoke, whiskey, some onions, pretty much anything that you like to put in your cheddar cheese. And once we come back, we'll get it all set up to put in the mold. So once you've salted your curd and added any flavoring that you want, then what you want to do is get a cheesecloth and into the mold and then just start packing the curd into the mold. And just keep pressing it down, it should all fit. By the way, the mold generally comes with a cheese kit. Then once you have all the curd in, just take a couple of minutes and just kind of pry up on the sides of the cheesecloth 
and it'll get any wrinkles out and it'll just give you a better looking wheel when you're complete. Then just fold over the cheesecloth. I have way too much here, but I used it for a different purpose. We were making some other cheese earlier in the week. All right, and put your follower on and we'll put it into our press. Now, you don't need a cheese press. If you uh, just use a cutting board and uh, if you have some weights, whatever, you've just got to come up with, in this case, 25 pounds, and then you'll need 50 later on. So mine's a little more extreme, I guess. We, uh, we made the, uh, the cheese press. So as you can see, we're using a postal scale underneath to, uh, to tell us what the poundage is, but weights work. That's the way we did it the first couple of times. So now you're going to press the cheese down to about 25 pounds. And you'll probably have to readjust a couple of times uh, and you're going to leave this for about an hour. So we'll be back in an hour. All right, so it's been an hour and we can take the cheese out of the press. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, take it out of the press and uh, clean the cheesecloth, flip the, uh, the cheese over and then put it back in the press for another hour. A uh, couple of things I should point out is one, with this type of cheese press, you're going to have to come back and tighten it every now and again to keep it at the 25 pounds. The other thing is that I did wash the cheesecloth between the last time we used it and this time, just in case somebody didn't think we did. So here we go, we'll take this out and you'll be able to see the uh, cheese is a lot more solid than it was when we first put it in the mold. So as you can see, it's starting to look a little more like a a chunk of cheese. There's still not solid solid, but it's it's not bad. So I'm just going to give a quick rinse to the cheesecloth. All right, so we're going to re reline the uh, mold with the cheesecloth and I've just wrung it out as best I can. And we're going to put the cheese in upside down to what it was before. And once again, just kind of pull the cheesecloth out of the way and fold it over and put the follower back in place. Back into the cheese mold. We'll tighten it down to 25 pounds for another hour. And we'll see you in an hour. All right, guys, it's been another hour, so we're going to take the uh, cheese back out of the mold again. This next time, we'll be doing it for uh, 24 hours at 50 pounds. So I, again, I'll just go off camera and wash the, uh, wash the cheesecloth. You can see already that the uh, cheese is getting a lot firmer than it was before. So we're going to flip it over again and we'll just give the cheesecloth a quick ring out and then we'll uh, put it back in the press. Sorry guys, I said 24 hours, I meant 12 hours. So again, just pull the cheesecloth so that you try to get as many of the wrinkles out as you can. And fold the cheesecloth over. And the follower. And back in the press. And this time we're going for 50 pounds. And there we go at about uh, 50 pounds. So we'll see you in 12 hours. Morning food fans. So we've been 12 hours. We'll take the uh, cheese out of the mold and uh, you see what it looks like. So after 12 hours in the mold, it should look something like this. So it's still pretty rubbery, but it's uh, definitely much harder than it was last night. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, put it on a little tray with uh, just a little bamboo mat underneath it and we'll let it sit out for about 24 hours. We'll flip it every couple of hours or so. And it should be ready for wax sometime tomorrow. 
Welcome back food fans. We're at uh, 24 hours now. Um, it may be a little bit longer or a little bit less for you, but basically what you do is just end up with a bit of a rind on the outside of the cheese. Just, just enough that it starts to feel a little bit solid. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wax the cheese. Um, we make our own wax, so it's just a combination of beeswax and a little bit of uh, vegetable shortening. Um, so let's go ahead and wax her up and that'll be the last step. So generally what I do, you can also dip this in wax, but generally what I do is I uh, do about two coats with a paintbrush as opposed to one heavy coat. If you chill the cheese slightly too, it helps the wax set up a little quicker. Just make sure you get along the edges. Basically you just don't want any air to get to the cheese. All right, so once you have the cheese covered, just check it over, make sure that there's no spots that are missing and you could probably do a little neater job than I did but it'll work. All right so once it's done it should look something like this. I'm sure you could probably do it a little bit neater than this and now it'll go in our cheese cave for well you can leave it a week but this one will probably will leave probably about a month um, so in about a month uh, we'll come back and uh, give it a little test. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, tell your friends and share the video. And tell me in the comments what time of cheese that uh, you like to eat. So once again, first we cook, and then in maybe a month or so we'll eat.